Hi, I'm Chris from SQL for Automation. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the SQL for Automation debugger. Now, just like with the other SQL for Automation programs, we first need a license to use the debugger. And if you haven't bought one yet, you can open the config tool, go to license and activate the test license. And this way you will get a license which is valid for two hours and enables you to make free links. Now before we start the debugger, I want to make a small testing setup. And in my setup I will have a CodeSys program, which will make a request every 3 seconds, and a Stoibli program, which will make a request every 2 seconds. And these two programs are running on my host computer, whereas the connector and database are inside a virtual machine. So in order to set up the connections, I need to create two new links, one for my CodeSys and one for my Stoibli program. To create a link, we go to our config tool and click on New, Enter a name, select the target type, choose the connector IP and, important, select a new port because the port 11001 is already used by our first link. Now we can do the same thing for our Stoibli link. And because we are using Stoibli this time, it's important that we select the correct target. So here we have our three links and now we can use the debugger to check if they work correctly. To open the debugger you can go to Tools and click on Debugger. Now with the debugger we can display all queries that are being made for our connector service. So to test this we can go to our Query tool and send a request. Now we can see the request in our config tool, but not in our debugger. And that's because in our link settings we have to define which messages we want to receive. At default every link gets created with the debugger level error. And this means that only error messages will be shown in our debugger. So to fix this I'm going to set all of these to request and we should receive all the messages. So let's send our request again and we should be able to get the message. Alright, so let's start up our two other programs. First I'm going to start the Stoibli program. And we should be able to receive some messages. It seemed to work. Next I'm going to start the CodeSys program. And it also works. So now we have three different ways in which we can access this database. We can use the query tool, we can use our robot, or we can use the PLC. Now to use the debugger there are a few things you can do. With this button here I can refresh the debugger. With these check marks I can scroll and refresh automatically. Here I can clear my list. And this opens up the selection menu. Now in the link section I can select which links I want to see. So if I do it like this, I will only see the Stoibli messages. In the field section, I can filter out the individual fields of the messages. So if I only want to see the timestamp, request and message, I would fill it out like this. And then under severity level, I can select from which levels I want to get messages from, just like in the link setting before. If I select debug, I will receive all messages. If I choose fatal error, I will only get the fatal errors. And if I select warning, I will get the warnings, errors and fatal errors. And finally, under time selection, I can restrict my messages based on their timestamp. And this way you can only show the messages from a certain time frame. Now in our list, we have three different colors. Successful queries are shown in black, warnings in blue and errors in red. And if you go to the config tool under options, debugger, you will find some additional settings. You can limit the amount of entries in the debugger database or choose the storage type. Just beware that if you set the storage type to file, every time your database gets accessed it will engage the hard drive and this can lower its life expectancy. So that's it for the debugger tool. I hope this video was helpful. Now if you have any more questions you can just ask them in the comments below or watch our other videos for more information. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.